Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day and welcome to today's show. You're about to see three cars in two locations. We're at the beautiful Botanic Gardens here in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales in this week's Classic Restos on the road. The Botanic Gardens here in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, sitting on 22 picturesque acres. Gorgeous backdrops. Oh. Toilet block. Anyway, first cap off the rank this morning is this amazing 1929 Buick Tourer. Good morning, Wayne, and welcome to today's show. Good morning, Fletch. How are you? Great, thank you. This car behind us, wow. Stunning? Yeah, it's been a bit of work in it but yeah. it's a good car these these types of cars when you see something like this finding words it's it, it, it's it gets very difficult what a beautiful uh, example of a 1929 Buick Tourer keeping in mind too one down from Cadillac on the chain so back in 1929 uh, not the best times for a lot of people so to have a car like this new you would have uh, been doing okay back then yeah you'd, you would have been a uh uh, sort of a Ritchie type person, you, you know, because the Chevs and the T model Fords were the earlier ones. So, yeah. now speaking of the history, Wayne, what can you tell us? Yeah, the the car come from a little town just out of Wagga, um, where the people that we bought it off, well, the, the mate bought it off, and then I bought it off a mate. But um, the people that had it out there, they were pulling tree stumps out with it before they retired it, and but it. It did a diff in because it wasn't strong enough to pull tree stumps out. So. Uh, understandable. Uh, fantastic stories. You often hear stories too. Uh, well, I uh, heard a few stories of the straight eight Buicks where just the, the engine and the rails were, were taken and then used on farms to work water pumps and what have you. They did their service of a, of a domestic application and then thrown into years of hard labour after that. Yeah, this one was pretty much left as a... Um, as a complete car when we got it and um, yeah I, I had some chasing to do obviously but yeah but not not as much as some other people have. Where did you find it and what was it like in condition when you did find it? It was at a little town called Collin Gully and that's where my it was advertised in the Wagga paper for sale and my mate went and bought it and um, I had he he'd bought it because he didn't want to see it go to anywhere because it was a good car and um, I bought it off him many years later because he'd bought a new house and bits and pieces had happened and uh, yeah and he'd gone another way with other cars so. And when you might think you're a bit flash with your 20 inch wheels on your late model car, 1929 Buick Tourer, 20 inch wheels there, complete with the lacquered timber spokes. What a, what a luxurious feature of that era, right there, just on on the on the cusp of, of going to the to the steel wire wheel. This would have been pretty well at the end, I would imagine, for the timber spokes, Wayne. Yeah, they um yeah well A models in this year they went to spoke wheels to wire spoke wheels and Cadillacs and all of those type cars they did too. So yeah. Uh, it's the it's the grandeur of, of, of this Buick. It's absolutely gorgeous, complete with the the running boards with the uh, the Buick uh, plaques there, proudly embossed with Buick there on the running boards. Uh, into the interior, that Art Deco style dashboard, um, and like all these cars from the era, the room in the back. You can see why they make fantastic wedding cars. <laughs> yeah, you can. There's more room in the back than there is in the front. Yeah. Engine up front. Tell us what this particular car is running. This one runs a six cylinder, 26 horsepower. Um, in Buicks, there's a lot of different models. And then they went, from this one, they went to Masters, which Master is a bigger motor again. Still a six cylinder, but a bigger motor. And then they went to straight eights. It's amazing too, we, we hear of 26 horsepower. Uh, got a, my Toro zero turn mower at home is 22.5 horsepower. Yeah. but. It's all about the gearing, and the lawnmower can't do 65 mile an hour either. No. 
the gearing. It's all about the gearing, and that's uh, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. And um, this thing seems to pull really well. It um, it does pretty good. So. Yeah. Now, Wayne, we have some photos up on the screen now of the uh, restoration procedure, and uh, poor old girl, she she was a real basket case. I I really, I certainly admire the the level of workmanship you've done here. Um, there's all different levels of, of restorations, but this to me, it's uh, that was a difficult one. Yeah, I didn't do the whole car on my own, and um, I I did sort of three quarters of it, and the club was organising a week rally to go out or fortnight rally to go to Alice Springs and back and some club members and a great mate of mine said how about we hook in and do your car um, this is about three months before we were to go he said well I reckon we can finish that car and you can drive it I said oh, I don't know if we can do that anyway so after about I don't know four or five half a dozen members coming around home every day and working daylight to dark on it and um, we uh, Got it going and then, uh, yeah, had a bit of a disaster with the motor that I spent a lot of money on. So, um, yeah, and I didn't finish up taking it. I finished up driving a Land Cruiser the night before. So, yeah. There's always other times, eh? There is, and we've got to go back to get our badge at Alice Springs. So we've been lying that off for, for a little while. So There's the perfect excuse, Wayne. Yeah. And now um, I have to make note, too, of the uh, state-of-the-art 1929 optional accessory of the day, the UHF antenna on the front of the vehicle. Uh, wow, they've been around a long time, those UHF radios, haven't they? Yes, it's one of the, one of the only modifications I've put in this vehicle. Um, the rest of it's got pretty much its own nuts and bolts and everything in it. Again, the enhancements of this vehicle, the chrome work that you've done... Um, the extent you've gone to, well, at the end of the day, I guess, if you're going to restore a vehicle like this, you you have to turn every nut and bolt, don't you? Yes, you do. It's had every nut and bolt out of it, every nut and bolt out of it, and um, stripped and put back in. And um, yeah, and if you don't do it properly, I, I figured it was what wasn't worth doing. Like, to, and I want it to do miles. I don't want it to sit in the backyard. Yeah. It's not a pretty car. It's to be driven. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's a pretty car. I think it's one of the sweetest Buicks I've, I've seen in quite a while. Now, I have to ask one question, too, about the roof. Now, I know that's been redone. Whoever has done that, that's a fantastic job that they've done there. They've got that grain right. Yeah, it's done. We have a, um, a local um, upholsterer in a little town just out of Wagga, and um, he's very, very good at it, and he actually enjoys what he does and shows a hell of a lot of care and thing about it, so... Wayne, I just want to thank you very much for your time out this morning to bring this gorgeous 1929 Buick Tourer to the Botanic Gardens here in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales. Thank you very much, mate. Beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Thanks, Fletch. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you feel pretty proud of it because it's a... Um, you, you know it's a good car, you know it's a strong car, and it's got no bad noises in it most of the time. Yeah, it's quite easy uh, to drive. I, uh, I drove trucks for a long time, and old trucks, new trucks, all sorts of trucks, and uh, this thing reminds me a lot of them because it's got a gate gearbox, uh, not a gate gearbox, but it's got a crash gearbox. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it just seems to drive very really nice. This is an Australian assembled car. It come out from the States with motor chassis, um, gearbox diff, wheels, I suppose. Um, but it didn't, ha the body was uh, made by Holden here in Australia and assembled on the car. That's a little bit of, uh, about my Buick. Um, I just like, hope you enjoy it and uh, yeah, as much as I do. When I was a kid, I loved cars, still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brown was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. 
It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts. Available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Welcome back. Next car up on today's show, a bit of a customised 1965 Pontiac Parisian. And to tell us more, here's Les. Okay, Fletch, how are you, mate? Great, Les, yourself? Yeah, real good. That's good, mate. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, no problem. Good spot here, mate. Botanic, yeah, botanic gardens here in Wagga Wagga. Yes, yes, beautiful place. Nice backdrop for this car. Now, it's been quite a while since I've had a car like this on Classic Restos. 1965 Pontiac Parisian. You've put your own touches to this car. Yeah. It goes back with you. You've got quite a history with it. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you've got it to this stage and where you are today, Les. Well, we were out cooking in here after a paddock of firewood and I seen it sit in the paddock. So I went, went and seen my mate Tony Lane and told him to bring the tow truck out. We've got to start. We stripped it down, we soda blast the car, we done all the panel work, Dave halfway done all the upholstery, and uh, Craig Key's done all the paint work, and I done the motor myself. It's a styly car, it must get a lot of looks. I've got to say, the this era uh, of Pontiac, Chevy Impala, particularly with this Pontiac, that the arrow point design, when you, when you look at the front fenders, when you get the side profile, yeah. I love that sharp look. Yes, yes, it, it's excellent. Yeah. Everyone's um, taking photos. Yep. You know, congratulate you, what a well job done. Yep. Yeah. Also with the Pontiac styling as well, we see the, the, the centre section of the hood, uh, almost like, you know, uh, Batmobile styling, yeah. if, if, you, if you want to put it that way. Um, love that style for this car. And mentioning a 66 Impala as well, sharing the same dash, so you can yeah. see the, the GM trait of, of the mid-60s, how it stayed fairly uniform. And motor and trans, everything, all the same. OK, tell us about what you've done to the engine up front. Um, we had two motors, we stripped down, we aced the bars from, we um, bored the best block out, we put fuelly heads on it, we put stage two heat seeker cam in it, we got fuelly heads, we got 600 holly on it, and chrome work to go on top of the motor, and a two speed power glide to go with it. Good on you, Les. And you had a bit of a donor car too, you yeah. transferred some of the, the running gear out of? Yes, we had another 65 Pontiac, but it had the pillars. And um, it got smashed, so I used all the parts of this, yeah. that one onto this one. Yeah. And all the chrome work had to go to Aubrey and get re chrome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the car turned out excellent. And that, talking of pillarless too, what a, what a great design. Mr. Pillarless, he's the guy that came up with that idea. Uh, went, went across quite a few brands, and I love that pillarless styling. Uh, as I've always said before, it's, it's the closest thing you'll get to a convertible when all the four glass is down. Inside, cosmetically, now you've put some of Les's own touches into there, haven't you, Les? Yeah, we've got XY bucket seats in it. We've got a Pro Centre quick shift in it. So for the Ford guys, you'd like to know that. XW, XY, front, yeah, front bucket. XW. Yeah. And um, we re the dash again, and we painted all the dash. We had to remould um, the dash to, because the water rusted all the front of the firewall. And also, Les, uh, you've had the seats reupholstered. You've made yourself your own centre console there. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what has surprised me as well, and hats off to the guy here, it's your daily drive. That's right. Well, you make something, you want to drive it every day and not let it sit in the shed for years. Well, you mustn't eat much because there's no way I'd be taking that to the Woolworth car park. I don't. <laughs> I park in the main street and walk in. <laughs> it's the sort of car you'd park five or ten streets away and walk back. Les, that's what we have to do with our classic cars. Yes, yes that's right. Yeah, and if you do go into a car park, go way up the end yeah. and have someone else run in and get the food while you stay with the car. Yeah. yeah. To reflect the effort that you've put into this car, Les, it's also won you a few trophies. Tell us about those. Yes, we've got um, one 14 car shows in it. Chermit, Tamora... Wangaratta, 
Corriong, the Wombat. Yeah. Yeah, all around the place. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful to be able to turn the key and drive it anywhere? She must yeah. be must be reliable. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Les, thank you very much, mate. You're a great bloke, and uh, I know you love your Pontiac. And uh, again, it's a it's a beautiful car. I love the condition that you keep it in. Yeah. It's as straight as an arrow. Yeah. It's uh, like I said, it's been a while since a car like this has been on classic restos, mate. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks, Les. Take okay, care. bye. Cheers. Uh, hang on, I've got to ask you about the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just finished my Pontiac and I'm doing up an EHU. Now I'm a legend, thanks to Fletch for giving me this legend hat. <laughs> this car means everything to me. Fam family, um, driving around in the car shows, meeting all the new people, all the new towns, going for all the top car shows in town and around the state. It's like King of the Road, it's a real good cruiser. Everyone looks and stops and takes photos and yeah, it's a really good feeling. Yeah, I love the car because I built it from, my, from myself from the ground up. It's everything I always wanted in a classic car and it runs like a gold watch. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Perhaps you're after some laid up cover whilst you're doing your restoration. Why not give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And don't forget the Shannon's Club is also there awaiting you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Welcome back. Still in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales. How are you, Peter? Very good, Fletch. Nice to see you. Likewise. Thanks for the invitation here. No worries. Much appreciated. Now, Peter, you have quite a humble size shed here. Uh, yeah. What is the size? It'd be about six metres by six metres? Six metres by six metres. It's 2.7 high. Yeah. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's not always about the size of the shed, but what's inside. Now, oh, yes. we have... Well, tell us, what, tell us what we have here. OK, this is my car. It's a, a one-man, one-car love affair. Uh, I have owned it since 1984. Um, I was, due to the fact we got married, waiting for kids, we sold it 20 years ago. Um, it didn't go very far, it was only not far from Wagga, and I was able to purchase it again six years ago. So I've purchased it in pieces, and we're now at the, this point of time, we're in the process of putting it together. Tell us the year and what it is. Okay, it's a 1973. 308 HQ GTS Monaro Coupe. Peter is standing right in the very spot, right in the hole, where the heartthrob, the 308, is going to go. Now, the stage you're up to at the moment, we can, well, we can pretty well see where you're up to. Um, where's the engine at this point? We're just waiting for it to come back from the, um, from the machine shop, yep. and we are ready to put it. We've got everything to put it back together again, and hopefully with the next couple of months, you'll be sitting in here. It's a very exciting stage. I love this stage of a restoration. Make the most of standing here, Peter, because uh, pretty soon down the track, not going to be any room to be doing that. My little 308 will be sitting in it again. Yeah. This is beautiful. Now, the rails out front, you've got the upper and lower control arms and you've got the rotors, got the calipers on, your ball joints. Uh, the frame has been sprayed beautifully in two-pack. Um, now, we see the firewall and the red, but it threw me when I first saw it. It's not remaining this colour, correct? No, it's going to go back to its original colour, which is the silver, mm. and it will have the orange stripes on it to go with it. Driveline, what are you doing there with transmission-wise? Uh, we're using the... We've gone back to the 308. 
and we're going to be using the M21 gearbox. Uh, we've got a Salisbury 308 10 bolt at the back, um, and it's just we're trying to get back to original as much as possible as we can, because that's that's how I like to have it. Did the car become a bit of a basket case? Did it did it go too far the other direction in terms of condition, or was it did it always remain a fairly a fairly good car condition wise? Um, it, it was it was rough in the beginning when I first bought it. Uh, yeah, it had a hard life, but ever since I've owned it, uh, especially the last the last time the last part of my life, it's now it's not going to have any more hard life. <laughs> We will not be doing any more burnouts than the back roads. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of car, like you say, this this stage of your life, to be able to get this, a GTS HQ two-door Monaro, I mean, that's pretty cool in anyone's language to have that. I, I was um, I was very happy with the fact that I was ever, uh, even able to buy it back. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Yeah, it was like you just bought the old friend back home again. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a it's not a car. It's yeah. not a with a with an old friend though. You can you can lock the door and not, don't let him in. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a car. It's not a point of value of what it costs or what it's worth. Mm. Uh, this is just my car. Yeah. yeah, and it will stay like my mate with his car. Yeah. It will stay with me forever. But it's a beautiful car. The, these have they're so sought after now for you to have this now and and to be able to restore it um, to the level that you're going to what are you going to do with the interior how's that going to look uh, we're, we're going back to original and, and and i talk to a lot of people because uh, because i want to go back down that path a month can play a difference mm. so one month they were vinyl mm. the following month they were uh, hounds tooth so you have to be exactly for... So this is a six month of 73, yeah. so I'm very lucky I can just stay with vinyl. Yeah, yeah. And, and that it will be all, all original, yes. Yeah. Now, do you realise we'll come back to Wagga when this car is on the road oh, okay. and we'll, we've, got to do, we've got to do a follow-up on this yeah. um, some nebulous time in the future. Oh, I'm assuming sometime next year, right? I would love to have it on the road by next year, but, yeah. but we'll see how we go. But, yeah. yeah, this is definitely... We will be cruising the main we definitely be cruising the main. The man's on a mission. <laughs> well, Peter, you are a Holden legend, so please oh, yeah. take a Holden legend's cap. There you go. There's not many of these that are being made, so consider yourself quite privileged. But you've got to give a cap to this guy. <laughs> HQ, GDS, Monaro. Yeah. Thank you, Fletch, and thank you very much to General Motors. OK, Peter, thank you very much for your time here this afternoon, and uh, we'll be keeping in touch because I want to see the progress on this HQ, and uh, we'll... Love to see it on the road one day, hey? Thank you very much, Fletch. Thank You're you welcome. for coming. Good on you, mate. Thank thanks, you. thanks, Bye. Peter. When I was a young boy, we left my country to come to Australia. And ironically, being a Holden man, the car that drove us away from my house to the airport was a HK Holden taxi. And so I've been with Holdens way back when I was a kid. In Greece, in their 60s, they had HK and HT Holdens. Um, as taxis in Greece, and in '83, I actually came across uh, EH still driving as a Holden in Athens. When we arrived in Australia, one of our first cars was a Holden, and for some strange reason, we have just gone straight through the, the years as Holdens. We've had a numerous ones over the years. Um, right down, my, my first car that I learned to drive on was a HQ station wagon. 253 HQ station wagon with hot wire mags. That was unbelievable in them days. <laughs> um, and this is my car now, my HQ, and it'd be, I'd be glad to come for you to come back and we'll go for a drive with it once it's on the road with classic restaurants and go again. This particular car came to my possession in my early 20s. I've had a, a lot of good times, a lot of good memories and um, for some strange reason, this car just brings out the youth in me. The, this has been a, a good therapy for me. I was able to find uh, a mechanic that comes and helps me and we spend a lot of times at night here. We'll come out here, have a cup of coffee, a drink, do a little bit of work on it. And all of a sudden, you, your day just passes. You're in somewhere in a peace of mind.
Well, what a show, featuring one of the best from David Dunbar Buick. And coincidentally, 1929 was the year that Mr Buick passed away. We then had Les and his personalised 1965 Pontiac Parisian, and rounding off with the exciting project of Peter's HQ Monaro. I hope you really enjoyed what you saw on today's show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm, the enjoyable egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.